That is our creator's love. He did not create robots and use remote control. He gave us the free will of choice to love him. So when we yield our will to his will and we go in love, then true love is given birth. We're not robots. So, oh, I don't know. God is not making me do it. No, 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 no. You yield your will, he will empower your will. If you don't exercise your will, he will not temper with your will. So your mind is involved, the emotions involved, your will is involved. And it's a free will of choice how you want to choose. So we are talking about our mind. And so our, our passion, I mean, our desire, if, if you entertain a lustful desire, it will become a stronghold and Satan will have a hold on you, making you a slave to that evil. Let's look at Romans chapter six, verse 16. Romans chapter six, verse 16 is so beautiful. It is talking about, Paul is saying, do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey. You are the ones, slaves, wh whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness. Let's, let me put it, simplify this way. If you are constantly yielding to unrighteousness, then unrighteousness will become your master and you'll become a slave to that. If you're constantly yielding to the righteousness of God, the righteousness of God become your master. But these are progressive. It is not only one area. Every area has to be focused on. i give you an example. When I was 15 years old, I backslided. Between 15 to 18, I backslided. My father backslided and I slide with him. But later I slide back to God. So... Uh, behind the school, we have these guys who are not concentrating on their studies, smoking. And I was very curious. When they let go the smoke, it came out like circles. Wow, came out from the nose also. I was very excited. And they called me and said, I must cry. But when I took the first bath, I was choked and I was coughing. And I thought, it is crazy, man. How can you really smoke this? And my friends told me, those guys there, they told me, Amos, don't give up. Press on. And so I pressed on. When you press on to smoking, you will bypass, you will overcome all the hiccups. And finally, you'll have a clean smoke. And you can suck the whole smoke do all the x-rays in your lungs and have some of your cells dying. And then you can blow it out through your nose, through your ears, or not, not the ears, but also through your mouth and you can make circles. But ultimately your lungs is gonna be affected. So I begin to think smoking is a bad habit. Jesus did not smoke in uh, in heaven, there's no cigarette factory and smoke will affect my lungs. And when I blow out, my friends will get, get sick and it's extra money and bad habit and not healthy. And so what's the exciting about smoking? It's just a kind of a kick. So I think I start thinking like that way. And when I was going to the army, 18 years old, I went on my knees, I put my hands on my mom's hand and I committed to my mom. I said, I want to completely yield to the, uh, this bad habit to the Lord to set me free and yield myself to him to deal with this bad habit. And mom prayed for me as I yield to righteousness and to be set free from this habit. And praise be to God. God honored that prayer and it wasn't uh, that fast. The commitment was necessary. The covenant was necessary. 
the word of God was very clear to please God. That this is the temple of God. Anything that displeases God, whether it's written in the Bible or not, you know yourself how it can affect your body, how it's a bad habit, how money is used and all that. So I yielded to God and soon I was set free. But if you give me a cigarette now, I can smoke it. I can make circles and it can come from my nose, not from my ears or my hair or anywhere. But, you know, there's no desire anymore. There's more hatred than desire. It is not going to please God. It's not going to please me either. Because your mind is not thinking like God. And your desires are not there. Your desires have been transformed. All passions and desires in this area has been nailed on the cross. So do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey by whichever area, whether looking at girls, pornography, or you know, things that you know that is not going to please God. It's not pleasing God. It's not good for you. Present when you keep yielding. It will become your master. You become the slave to that. That particular. All areas could be good. Speaking in tongues. Uh, reading the word. Maybe even preaching. Leading a cell group. Hallelujah. All good. But when you're alone. The devil will stir up your emotions. And say. Wow. You missed that. Go for it brother. God understands. The grace of God. Will cover you. The blood of Jesus is over you 24 hours. But the truth is you have become a slave to this area of weakness. And that can be the door for the devil like, like, like cancer slowly enter you and destroy you. So yield it on the cross, nail it on the cross. And constant application of God's word. Constant. Because it's a habit. It's rooted. Your mind is rooted with a desire. And the desire is so rooted. It's a stronghold. You have to concentrate on the area that is you are weak. If you are lazy, you concentrate on working on that. How can I be overcome this laziness? Of course, do something that make you active. So whether it's leading to righteousness or obedience to sin that leads to death, so work on it.